All right, somebody woke up in a mood. Oh, look, it's the 12 yard line. <laughs> what happened to our show? <laughs> I know where this is going. We might have to make a correction. I could have chose my words better there. <gasps> Unleash the fury, man! Son of a bitch. <laughs> I just hey. had a thought, and then I hit the record button. I'm glad that it pops up and warns you, otherwise I'm out of here, like, yeah. throwing shade at people. And, like, uh, that part doesn't get cut somehow. I don't know what happened. Welcome to Hashtag Sports, where it's literally just a bag of beating itself over and over again. God. Mario! Podcast oh, version of Human Centipede. <laughs> Mario's just mad because I said that when he wears a hat that's not fitted, it looks like he's subliminally advertising Doritos with that forehead that he's got going on, yeah, that forehead I know, triangle. I know I'm on the Peyton Manning uh, plan for remembering every football play I've ever ran in my life. Mario's the one that that's a target of the uh, TikTok and Instagram ads where it's like, do you have a problem finding snapbacks that fit your giant head? <laughs> Look, they even come with stickers so you can leave them on. Like, I, I got my buddy pissed off the other day because he's bald. I said, when you wash your face, how high up do you go? <laughs> Mario, do you ever do a ponytail and pull it through the hole in the snapbacks? Yes. Good on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that that's out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming back to Hashtag Sports. We don't know what you're doing here, but make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Wait, All we can't stuff. go another second. We can't go another second. Joe got away scot free, so we can't. We can't Absolutely. let Joe get away scot free. What, what did I do? What's Joe is the guy that has like to shave shame. the area between where he wants his chest hair to show. And his <laughs> he has to make sure this area right here is shaved for public consumption. <laughs> he just Coming does it so when he goes to the store, people don't ask why he's wearing a sweater under his polo. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Coming from the guy who's wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> Mario's got my back. See? Come on, Mario. It's a dicky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Shade Falco jersey, for the love of God. You got to dress this thing up somehow. Man, Need what heart. happened to our show? Coming for your footsteps. What? Putting makeup what on happened? a pig, still a pig, Paul. <laughs> God. Jesus Christ. Well, Patreon members, thanks for uh, <laughs> joining. Getting your money's worth. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're ready for an influx of refund requests. <laughs> As always, you can find all of our socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook in the description. Today's show is sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes in association with Cryer.co. The William Syndrome Foundation is the charity for 2023. So all, all that stuff, when you do super chats during the lives that we have every Sunday, will go to the William Syndrome Foundation. We actually have a stupid game we want to play with you guys. I love stupid games. No, they're always fun. That's kind. Would you, would you like to play a game? I do so want to I, point out that I am personally offended by the fact that I own a giant wheel and Mario wouldn't let me use it. No, we can't. When else could you use a giant wheel if not for this moment? That's right. You had three selections on it, Paul. I couldn't really use all of them. Wow. Okay, so what you see in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, was a, a collaboration by Paul and myself of players that are kind of like on the bubble. If you wanted to say that, they're kind of, mm, you don't know. So we have four different options here for these, uh, for these players. They're either going to make number one, and you can play in the comments as well. Number one, they're going to make the 53 man roster. Two, they're going to get cut or waived. Three, they're going to be on the practice squad or four, because there's only one round of cuts now, ladies and gentlemen, will they get traded prior to the end of uh, training camp when the 53 man cuts happen? So this should be a lot of fun, a lot of chaos. A lot of stupidity all rolled into one. If if you're still watching after that intro, hey, you might have watched the rest of the video. I want to point out when we we talked about this last week, um, the 53 man roster. Since there's only one roster cut down, you're talking about teams going from 90 to 53. It's going to be crazy. So there, this off season or this leading into the season could be a totally different animal where we see trades just all over the place going into preseason week four, right? Like that preseason three to four week. You could see trades absolutely everywhere. I think that's going to be a huge proponent or a huge part of this offseason is going to be a, a lot of those player for player trades. Um, just trying to get a resource for another resource that you're probably going to cut. 
Um, so I think trade's going to be real popular. Just just to mention that, right, to those that don't know, they're not doing yeah. multiple cuts this year. They're going right to 53. Yeah, and I'd like to mention that they could also have trades, too. Thanks for listening to my intro, Paul. I freaking said that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm <laughs> emphasizing. <laughs> trades, I don't know. Who knows? Emphasizing. That's why trades are on there, though, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, Mara. I was watching the movie on your forehead. I missed that part. <laughs> God. Blinded by the glare coming off that thing. John Wick is pissed off you stole his jersey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, also, with this game as well, if there's a there's a player chosen and Paul says he's going to be on the pra- – uh, Dotson's going to be on the practice squad. So if Joe or Ryan happen to disagree – they could use one of their vetoes. They get one veto. Obviously, we've got nine players here. So I love this. Okay. So on the wheel, if you guys get, can't see it, I'll say we got uh, David Quisenberry, Tommy Doyle, Greg Mance, Reggie Gilliam, Tyrell Dodson, Sierra Neal, AJ Klein, Shaq Lawson, and AJ Epineza. We did, uh, we did a drawing. Nobody saw it but me. So Paul's going first. Yes. Let's go. All right, Paul, spin the wheel. See who you get. Whee! Tyrell Dodson. Hey. Okay. Hey. A little fanfare around it. Nice. Yeah, look at that. Um, I, I, uh, so 53 cut practice squad or trade. I don't think Tyrell Dodson has any trade value whatsoever. Uh, practice squad means he would have cleared waivers. I think that is a distinct possibility. Uh, I don't think he makes the 53 man roster. So, uh, I do think the Bills are going to practice squad him. Now, they have to cut him or they have to wave him to get him to the practice mm-hmm. squad. But I just think Terrell Dotson's likely a practice squad player for you. You've already made draft, you know, you've made a draft investment there. Um, you know, you, you've made a draft investment the year before that. <laughs> so <laughs> I just think Terrell Dotson's time is, is just kind of numbered, um, especially since you're going linebacker light anyway. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say he's a special teams all-star to the fact that you got to keep him on your roster. So uh, I think he is a practice squad at best. He will be waived, but I think they would retain him on the practice squad. Okay. And just to kind of clear the air, Paul, cause you like uh, explaining stuff to people that I did put, <laughs> I did put cut wave on there as like yeah. a slash. So could you right. explain the differences between the two? Because a lot of people get them confused every once in a while. Yeah, sure. They are what they, what I say they are. Next question, please. <laughs> so uh, I, when you have players, so when you're going down from uh, that 90-man roster to the 53-man roster, uh, you have to waive players with under four years of service, right? So what that means is their contracts go out to every team, and every team has the option to get that player with that contract, but they have to put them on their 53-man roster. You can't just pick up a player and then put them on, on your practice squad. That's not how that works. So they, a player, when you hear the term clears waivers, that means that their contract that was available for that player went out to all other teams. All other teams declined to add that player to the 53-man roster. That player is now a free agent. Um, when you cut a player that's normally a player that's post needing to go through waivers, usually that's four years of service. Um, and that's a player that hits free agency right away. So again, big difference. Veterans get cut. Uh, n- under four years of service typically are the ones that are waived. There are uh, there are times where veterans get waived, but some, we'll save you those details. Can you imagine if like the, <laughs> when a guy gets waived, there's like an email that goes out to all 32 GMs and one of those guys hits reply all. I'll take him. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be on third. We, I got him. <laughs> <I'll take it. laughs> all right, Joe, you're up. So, we oh, it hurts. <laughs> it's about Saran Neal. I'm gonna go with uh, you know, cut or wave and try to make the uh, practice squad. That's what I'm going. All right, I like it. Anybody have a veto on that? Yeah, he's he's currently on the roster for 2023 and 2024, where in 2024 he will be 30 years old. So, okay. not many players or not many teams really want to take on that deal. Obviously, like you said, as they went smaller in the draft as well. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, Ryan, they, draft, they drafted a linebacker who's just a few pounds heavier than him. I know, like that's what I was saying the right. whole time. Neil should try to <laughs> play outside <laughs> linebacker for the Bills. That's right. Yeah, I'm, su- I'm surprised Neil. I'm surprised the Neil move hasn't been made already. I mean, they saved 2.8 mm-hmm. against the cap if they if they get rid of him. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. could be it could be one of those things he's kind of saving. You know what I mean? He already knows he has him there. Uh, barring he any might, might be waiting camp. for an injury or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. 
All right. Ryan, you're up, buddy. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, this is a good one. So this is a good one. one. Yeah, because Quisenberry is interesting because you've kind of got like these four, five guys right now on the line, on the offensive line, right? I mean, you've got your starters um, and then you've got Torrance and then you've got like Doyle, Butker, Quisenberry, Edwards, and Mance. Like they're all kind of like all five of these guys are all in the same area where you could really swing either way. I think, you know, Quisenberry, he, he had the time last year where he stepped in. He was admirable. You know, when you look at the other guys that are out there, I don't think he's necessarily a trade candidate, right? I mean, who's trading for a 33-year-old offensive lineman, you know, that you've got to pay a million six to? So I'm actually going to go. I think he's going to make the 53-man roster. I'll give Quisenberry Ooh. on on the 53 man roster. I think some of these other guys that we may talk about may be better trade candidates. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end of the day, I think just behind the, uh, the the starters, you want someone with the experience that Quisenberry has, the ability to step in in a pinch and play. Um, if it's for any length of time, I think you definitely worry that he's stepping in for a length of time, but he can step in mid game if he needs to, and I think that makes it more valuable than a guy like. You know, maybe Butker or even you could argue Tommy Doyle um, to where they may be more on the fringe of a cut or or I'm sorry, a cut or a trade candidate. So Quisenberry, I'm going to go. He makes a 53 when uh, when cut downs happen. You know, it's interesting that you say that, Brian, because I look at not to not to veto. Right. I'm not beat. This is this isn't a veto, but I just just the <laughs> well, you're not veto. You have to agree with me. I do That's agree with rule. you. I do agree with you, <laughs> but I the case to make a trade for Quisenberry, I think, is stronger because you look at what injury is going to happen through that 90-man roster cut-down period, right? And mm-hmm. I think Quisenberry becomes a player that a team like Atlanta, who's just in dire straits for offensive linemen, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, you know, there's teams that are going to say he's more valuable to us than he is to them, so let's let's at least get something because he can play wherever we need him to play. And we're just in it in a bad way. Uh, Quisenberry to me is a stronger trade candidate than somebody like Tommy Doyle, just because he's just simply more versatile. Not uh, not amazing, but you don't have to be amazing to get traded in the NFL. Yeah. I think, I think you just look at, you just look at the age, right. And the contract situation again, he's, yeah. he's 33. He's on a one year deal. So he's a free agent at the end of the year. He could retire at the end of the season as a 34 year old. Mm-hmm. offensive linemen. So I don't I don't know who's going to be necessarily lining up to give up an asset for Quisenberry and they may hope that he gets cut if that's the situation. Um yeah. I mean I could I, you know again I could see a desperate team doing something but I don't I don't foresee anyone giving up anything of any significant value and that would be a draft pick for a David yeah. Quisenberry. Maybe yeah. he's part of a package in some case but I just don't see it with his contract and age. I think it's interesting that he was drafted in the sixth round of, of 2013 and only has four accrued seasons. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that's remarkable in, in, yeah. in the NFL. Like he's been able to hang on that long for a reason. Which means he's, he's a cut to, candidate, not a wave yeah. candidate. Yeah, which means he's Going been able to. to right. Yeah, he's he's been able to adjust on the fly, and he 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 understands the practice squad game. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you know it's interesting. And Paul, if if he was cut, the um, the new rules for practice squad as well. There's you can all have veterans on there, correct? With more than yep. four recruit seasons. Okay. Yep. Right. True. True like story. It. Like it. <laughs> all right. Paul's up. Yeah. Who cares? Oh, yes. Yes. Shaq oh, boy. I'm so, I'm so excited. All right. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. This is my Emmy moment. I just want erroneous. to erroneous. <laughs> erroneous. Erroneous <laughs> on all parts. So, so Ryan is historically mad at me because I put Shaq I hate, Lawson. I hate on this. this. I hate that we're having and this conversation. Here, and here's why I think Shaq Lawson is an ideal trade candidate. And the reason that I say Shaq Lawson is an ideal trade candidate is because there's a team that's transitioning from a four, three system to a three, four system. Shaq Lawson fits the fits a three, four system to a T he did when he was in college. He did his first few years in the NFL. He continues to be a ideal fit for a three, four system. And that's Carolina. Carolina is, again, making that transition. Shaq Lawson fits. Shaq Lawson signed a one-year deal because he wants to be here. But if it's cut or trade, you go where, you know, why would you want to get not get paid, 
right? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. I I think I think Shaq Lawson makes a perfect trade candidate to a player to a place like Carolina, who's transitioning from that four three to that three four. It, it's just a scheme fit thing. He is going to continue to just be misplaced in a four three, and if he doesn't make a switch to a three four, his career is effectively over, in my opinion. It, he would actually he sh he should be traded to Carolina. Like, I just don't see a scenario where it won't make more sense for him to go to a 3-4 system. Guys, the fact is he's not a 4-3 defensive end. Like, it's he's just not a skill set, fits a 3-4 it's significantly better. His career would actually last longer because right now he's just kicking one-year deal cans down the road. And that's a way to a short career, right? Like, you, your career short at that point. Um, it would be wise for him to move to a 3-4 system. Shaq Lawson's a trade candidate, and specifically to Carolina, because they're moving to a 3-4 system with uh, head coach Frank Reich. Go ahead, Ryan. Oh, Go right. ahead. Veto, veto. <laughs> yeah, veto. go ahead. Veto. I, I don't see I, – I, it's twofold, right? One, I'm I'm a big Shaq Lawson guy. I was I was a Shaq Lawson guy when he left, and, and I thought they should have kept him because what he brings to the table you don't have on this roster right now. Um, I think it's he's a great fit for them. He's an anchor defensive defensive end. He does a great job of stealing the run. You you know he's going to handle things when it comes to, you know, a quarterback trying to roll to his side of the field, a running back trying to run like a stretch play. He's going to stretch that out. He's going to make it uh, he's going to make it make it difficult for them to run the ball. But then I then I look at the defensive end position on this team, and they're not in any shape to get rid of Shaq Lawson, whether it's through trade or cut at this point. I mean, it, Von Miller, again, he's he's out. You've got Rousseau, and then you've got a bunch of guys who haven't really proved that they could be worth anything other than Shaq Lawson. Shaq Lawson may not be, you know, a world breaker. He's not a guy who's going to come out and just be a, a wrecking ball on the field, but he's a guy that's going to add stability and a veteran presence to a defensive front that needs it really badly until Von Miller comes back. Because are you going to put your faith that, Boogie Basham and AJ Epinesa are going to be the opposite defensive ends to Greg Rousseau. You can't, that's not a situation that can happen in any way, shape or form going but into the Super Bowl or bust. The salary cap tells you, you have to, at some point though, right? Like it's this, this is the way teams get built. Or you can keep Shaq Lawson until Von Miller comes back and run Miller and Rousseau, which you're fine with. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the option. Mm -hmm. I think the I question know. here is if, if Miller was healthy, would have would Shaq have still gotten signed? Yes, probably. Okay, yeah, because that's it for me. Like if you if you're still saying that Shaq Lawson gets signed with Miller being healthy, then okay, then he's going to be on this team. He's going to set the edge for you, like Ryan says. He does all those great things. We don't know what type of uh, philosophical difference they're going to have in 2023 with the defense going in because it, it looks a little bit different already. You know, I mean, even though there's a lot of the same moving parts, that it looks it's going to look a little bit different. But if you if you say that, oh no, he if if Miller was good, Lawson wouldn't be here. Then you, you, he's an expendable asset, who was not picked by this regime. We remember, you know, he was picked mm -hmm. by the Rex Ryan regime. So that those are other things that kind of factor in if you if you were wondering what that as well. So Shaq Lawson, Shaq Lawson, and Jordan Phillips are kind of two guys that I think bring something that this team has desperately needed. Um, two years ago, specifically. So two years ago, when they got beat. Um, by Kansas City, they lacked an edge on defense. They lacked a, a kind of like a mean, nasty streak. Oh, he was, and, he was with the Jets that year, right? Yeah, he, no, was, he was with the Jets, the Jets that year. Yeah. And that was a situation where they needed guys that could go out and be, and that's not who Hyde is. That's not who Poyer is. They're not, you know, they're not guys that are going to get up after a play, get in someone's face. They're not going to be enforcers when it comes to offensive linemen, getting an extra cheap shot in, things like that. Jack Lawson and Jordan Phillips allow guys like Ed Oliver to be hyper aggressive on defense because those are guys that are going to step in if he bites off a bit more than he can chew. And you've seen that time and time again last season with Jack Lawson and Jordan Phillips. It's just when they're on the field, it just feels like the defense plays with a little bit more of a nasty streak, which they need to up front. I thought mm -hmm. that was one thing you, you heard them get criticized for that, that they just didn't play nasty. There was no, you know, you know, you think about like, again, like hockey, right? Like when the defense gets a cheap shot on Josh Allen, there's no retribution. There was no retribution up until two years ago and or until, until last year, really. Mm -hmm. Now you've got, you've got that in Lawson and Phillips. And I think if you get rid of Lawson, I still don't know where that comes from other than Phillips, who's going to see a reduced role this year based on the signings that they've had and, and kind of mm -hmm. what they've done with this defensive front. I think Lawson's just too, 
valuable to this defense. He lets them play the way they need to play. And it's going to be tough to fill that void at least until Miller comes back. But again, Miller's not that guy. Miller's that he's, he's a closer and he's going to go out and rush the passer. And that's about all he does. He's not going to be someone who gets in someone's face, not going to be someone who runs his mouth. And that's what Lawson and Phillips bring. And that's extremely valuable. I think for a team like this, they need an edge from someone. And let's be honest, right? Miller has, you know, made a career by getting a great jump, having a great burst and being strong through that pocket. The fact is we saw what Trey looked like coming back from ACL. Right. So you, mm-hmm. you're going to see a hampered Von Miller come back like that. That explosion is just not going to be there. Even of course, you also saw Van, Von Miller on Instagram the other day. He was squatting what where what he was doing uh, 120 lunges miles. with uh, 120 on either side. So, I mean, yeah, he's not he's not going to be the same player right out of the no. game. There's just that that's no. a mental right. hurdle that you just can't yeah. clear. You heard right. um, if you listen, you guys follow the NBA. You heard J.J. Reddick talk about that on this podcast. Right. Like the ov- overcoming. The yeah. the injury is one thing, but the mental hurdle is a completely different yeah. thing when you're a professional mm-hmm. athlete. So I, I, I yeah. fully expect that to struggle. I just just veto with everything I have to veto with, Paul. <laughs> well, I I you know part of me was enjoying the thought that while Buffalo was looking for a uh, running back with a little bit more junk in the trunk, I was like, oh God, wouldn't it be great to sign Leonard Fournette? Because remember Shaq yeah. lost in a four yeah. I mean, that was this fight. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, and that was what I pointed to after that. When, when we talked, you know, when I talked with Drew on, on his show, when they brought Lawson back, that was what I, I brought up. I said, mm-hmm. I felt like that was something that they were missing was that guy right. that is just, you know, I don't care what happens to me, but you're not well. going to mess with my teammates and you're not going to make, you know, you're not going to make us look weak or, you know, right. we're going to go yeah. punch you in the mouth literally and figuratively and that's and brandon think, uh, bean something... did say brandon bean did say on a podcast recently that the biggest pr nightmare on the buffalo bills is shaq lawson because mm-hmm. and i quote you know when he's entered the room yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah all right we can probably get back i'm, I'm i think i i think we settled that one Oh, yeah. I knew that was going to be a brawl. All right, Joe, you're up, buddy. All right, let's go. With five left, let's see who we get. Oh, oh another good one. Uh, you know, another good one. Let's see. Oh, Reggie. No. Answer correctly, Joe. Answer correctly. <laughs> I just don't see a spot for him on this team, to be honest with you. After after signing another tight end, I just, you know, a lot of times, you know, William was listed as a fullback slash tight end. And now we get a number one draft pick. Uh, you know, we spend that on a tight end. He might not be the best blocking tight end, but you look at, you know, also Damian Harris. You talk about him a little bit. You talk about some of the bigger backs that we got during uh, the offseason. Uh, I just don't see a spot for him. I think he's a cut candidate all the way. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just looking at Gilliam's uh, contract, he is. He's uh, as of March nineteenth, four hundred and five k was guaranteed this year, mm-hmm. and then he is going to be on the hook next year for the Buffalo Bills at age twenty seven. And in a league where he only has three accrued seasons, right. so he he literally could pro- possibly be a practice squad candidate if if need be. You know, what I mean, he's right. a guy you could just keep there, and mm-hmm. it doesn't hurt you. I'm sure he would want to be on the team unless mm-hmm. another team offers him a spot. But yeah, fullbacks anymore yeah. really not yeah. a thing it's no. not a thing you know it's unless you're kyle you check in san francisco like it's just not a thing right like yeah i could i could see there. i could see quentin morris taking that role this year i, I think morris that. is much more versatile when it comes to that type of situation obviously you mm-hmm. lose taiwan jones so gilliam may have an inside track at making the team there but i also think what you've seen in the offseason is that this team is prioritizing players on offense and defense and not necessarily the special teams as much. You can make the argument you've got Matikavich on the roster, you, so you mm-hmm. don't necessarily need that special teams ace because you've got one. Um, but now with two legitimate tight ends in the fold, I could definitely see Quentin Morris shifting over to more of that H-back you know, power situation, who, again, brings more versatility than Reggie Gilliam. Love Reggie Gilliam, great guy. But at the end of the day, $1.7 in cap space and – multiple guys on the roster that can fill his role. I just, I don't see a spot for him. I yeah. completely agree with Joe on that. Yeah. It brings up a great point though. You, you hang on to Morris. If you ever want to go to a three tight end set, it's sure. much more valuable than bringing in mm-hmm. Zach Davidson. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, now we are at Ryan with four left. Uh Oh, look at this list. 
Oh, get the offensive Ooh. lineman. <laughs> just just rewind the video to when he was talking about Chris and Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's the kind of that they're in that same realm, right? Where you could really see either guy. Um, there's that there's that four car pile up. It's Doyle, Butker, Quisenberry, Edwards, and then you can add you can add Mance in there too. And it's just it's tough, right? Because he's 31, so you kind of the age game kind of comes into play again. So it's kind of like the same argument that you have with Quisenberry. It's like yeah. he's 31. He's a you know one year deal. You can save 1.2 on the cap if you get rid of him. Um, I, I don't. I don't necessarily see a path to the roster for him. You've got guys that can step in at center if you need them to in, in that swing situation. You've got Bates that you can bump inside, and then you've got obviously Torrance if he doesn't win that job. I just don't see I don't see keeping Mance over Doyle and Butker. And I think that's probably his primary competition. They love Tommy Doyle. He's mm-hmm. Tommy Doyle and Butker. They are, you know, they're McDermott and Bean guys. So I, I just yeah. don't see Mance having any type of an inside track at making this roster. I think he's probably a cut candidate, but I guess at 31, you could make an argument that Paul made for Quisenberry that he may be a little bit more valuable in terms of a trade candidate because of his age, better chance of re-signing him in the, in the off season, something like that. But um, ultimately I don't see him on the 53 man roster. So just for fun, I'll say he gets traded. He's a trade candidate that gets thrown in there late round pick, you know, day three type of pick sixth round, seventh round, something like that, that just, they get something for him before cut day. Um, Cause somebody needs a backup center. Um, which which is a, a pretty valuable position. It's nice to yes. have a guy with experience like Mance would be. Yeah. I think Joe will probably agree with me here, but Mance seems like the the I or the the uh, Ryan Bates handcuff, right? Like that. Mm. That's just what yeah. it feels like, especially since Bates Bates has missed time. Bucker has missed time, both to pretty severe injuries, right? And Mance just feels like the handcuff to that. Yeah, I was I was actually really hoping that that Ryan would say that the cut so that way I accuse my veto. I really think that Mance is a really strong trade candidate because he's the center. He's the guy who knows how to run an offensive line, right? Like he's the guy that's kind of in charge. He's been traded twice already in his career. So obviously teams mm-hmm. are interested. Um, so I think that he's definitely uh and he's he is a little bit younger than Quisenberry, so that's why I would put him more in the trade market than I would uh would Quisenberry, but yeah. That's, well, uh, and I think I think we all look at it and say there's no way David Edwards is getting cut from this team, right? Like, there's just no way he's mm-hmm. definitely going to make this team. Yeah. The other option is is Mance. May, maybe he goes to the practice squad. Um, they they yeah. did sign him to a futures contract, so mm-hmm. he's not counting against the 53 at mm-hmm. this point. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so I guess he could probably he could slip through there, but I would see him more of a trade candidate before they get to the point where they're worried about whether they're going to put him on the practice squad or not. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. I mean, Dane Jackson was a seventh rounder, but we're going to skip over that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm firing at Paul all day today. I don't know why. Be careful. All be right. careful. Who's uh, So Paul's up. Their last one, Paul. Let's see yeah, how it goes. Be careful. One of these guys has your haircut. <laughs> uh, not Tommy Doyle, though. Uh, touchdown, not Tommy Doyle. Doyle. Yeah, touchdown, Tommy Doyle. Uh, man, they just the – Doyle just rules. They just can't help themselves with these big guys on the offensive line, right? They just cannot such a help monster. loving those gigantic right tackles. They just love them. They think they're great. And maybe it's because did, you did have you see his Raz score, though? Well, I know, I know. I, I did see his RAS score. I did see that RAS score. But it's you know, it's it's fascinating because Tommy Doyle is really limited. He can't play guard. You can't put him inside, right? No. So as Ryan had mentioned before, that does limit your options for what you can really use him for. He has to play a tackle position, and you're just hoping to God it's never left, right? Like, uh, I think that's kind of where you sit. Uh, with Tommy Doyle is if Deion Dawkins were to go down, is Tommy Doyle playing left tackle for you? Or are you, th- are you throwing Quisenberry out there? Well, I mean, if given the options, you're probably throwing Quisenberry out there before you put in Tommy Doyle down. I think the only way that Tommy Doyle sees the field is if Spencer Brown, uh, if Spencer Brown, uh, gets injured or, or plays to a level that is just, just not repairable in, inside a season. Um, with that being said, He's too controllable. Tommy Doyle makes this football team a 53 man. Mm-hmm. They're not going to they're not going to run the risk of waving him because they'll they'll lose him at some point yeah. on the practice squad. So he'll have to make the 53 man yeah. roster. With that being said though, I think there's something to be said for like pup list players. This is probably a good good time to bring this up. So when you have a player on pup like Von Miller will be pupped, 
right? He'll be an active pup. Mm -hmm. Like we know that he's going to be on the physically unable to perform list. Uh, although they could make the 53 man roster and then IR him. Um, I have a feeling they might pup him instead. Ryan, Joe, what do you think? What do, with Von Miller, do you think they're going to injure reserve him or do you think they're going to pup him uh, going into the season? Yeah, I, I think they put him on the pup. I don't, I don't see any benefit to putting him on IR because pup, he can be with the team. He can practice with the team. He can kind right. of, or he can't practice, but he can do everything that he's with the team other than practice. Right. And I fully right. see Von Miller as the type of guy who's going to want to come to camp. He's going to want to be with the team, the camaraderie, the leadership. He's just too valuable in that role. Um, and then when it comes to moving him to the IR, there's really no benefit to moving him to the IR. If he's on the pup list, you just, you just keep him there. Um, until he's ready to come back and that may be sooner rather than later so right yeah i think about what he said just recently at voluntary camp about digs missing and that goes to ryan's point of he's a guy that's going to want to be there uh, all the time he you know, he, he talked about how it was important for digs to be there and he was upset that it wasn't and i think that's something that bob miller really wants uh to be as a teammate someone that a veteran guy shows that leadership uh, and he knows, you know, throughout his history, uh, he knows how important that is to have those veteran guys to show that. So, uh, yeah, he's a leader of this team and he'll want to be there. So, yeah, I think Publis makes the most sense. Well, the reason that I bring that up, right, is because those transactions typically result in a player has to make the 53-man roster and then be put on the pup list. And mm -hmm. then that means that you're waiving a player or you're cutting a veteran, right? And that's where that, mm -hmm. that designation is important. Right where you might cut a player like a Mance who wouldn't be subject to waivers, right? And say, mm -hmm. hey, by the way, don't leave the parking lot, right? Like, yeah. don't leave the parking lot. We'll we'll resign you tomorrow. We need the space for Vaughn because we're going to put Vaughn on the pup list tomorrow. The roster mm -hmm. spot will get back, and then we'll bring you back in at that point. So again, some of these designations are going to be circumstantial based off of how the roster is broken down. I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, and I think given what happened last year with I mean, the Bills being so consumed with, with Naeem Hines, you let Hodges go out the door. Mm -hmm. You waved him, uh, you know, in the trade and all, everything else. And you, you still had, uh, I think Stevenson was on the IR, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you activated him in order to get him out. Yep. So that's one of those things. That, I think Bean's more cognizant of what's going on now because of that. Mm -hmm. so. so, Paul, if they, if they move him to the reserve pop list ahead of cuts, mm -hmm. he doesn't count towards the 53 at that point mm -hmm. correct they could move him as part of right. a transaction to get to 53 the only mm -hmm. difference in that is that he just misses the first four games of the season is guaranteed right. versus if he yeah. remains on active mm -hmm. up he has right. to make the 53 and then he can get activated at any time so he's probably active until until cut down day and then as a transaction they move him to reserve he's going to miss the four first four games which is expected anyway and right. then they'll mm -hmm. leave him there for the for the remainder of until he comes back. So right. the only difference is right. that he, th then they're guaranteed their entire base salary, which again, Von Miller is not a cut candidate or anything like that. So you're not worried about his base salary. You're going to pay it either way. Right. Yep, exactly. It's there's, that's what I mean. That's the transactional stuff that I think a, a lot of times bills fans kind of forget, um, you know, that there's a little wiggle room with how you want to handle it, but some of it's politics with the player, you know, like you have to play that game, right? Because a lot of these transactions can cost that player money. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, you just got to be careful with that stuff. But yeah, you're absolutely right. That's why you need a veteran. Okay. Uh oh, speaking of veterans, veterans too left. Right. How are both AJs left? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's about the AJs. About the AJs. All right, Joe. Let's see what you get. We. Oh, go. let's go. I like let's it. Go. I like it. And, and to be honest, you know, we talk about rewinding back to previous footage. For me, this one could easily go back to you could rewind this back to what Paul said about uh, earlier about uh, Shaq Lawson. I think that I think that AJ, I got AJ from that, right? Just making sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Sure I read that right. AJ, AJ, it's awesome. Um, no, you, got, you got AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys. Just, oh, OK. Well, <laughs> I can't. I can't. You All know right. a Backstreet Boy. I, am <laughs> I wouldn't be able to say that, but yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, I actually think AJ Epinesa is a trade candidate. Uh, I think that it would make sense, in my opinion, to trade him last year. His contract um, just really hasn't really hasn't panned out, and it's time for me to see uh, McDermott and Bean just be able to get away from bad draft picks. Like it seems like they tend to hold on to these guys, give them opportunities. I feel like Epinesa had a lot of opportunities last year and just didn't didn't show me anything that said he should remain on this team. Um, and I think there are teams that could use 
a player like Epinez. And I think that um, he's, he could do well on other teams, but he just hasn't, he hasn't provided that spark that we need him to hear. Um, and yeah, I think that for those reasons, he would be a good trade candidate. And, and I'm kind of with you there, Joe. Epinez is what, 6'5", 270, yeah. and he doesn't play 6'5", 270, right? right? Like he play he plays like he's 6'2", 250. Yeah. You know, like he tries to play a speed role, and it just never seems like he's gotten the angles down that he needs to in order to be a successful defensive end in mm-hmm. the NFL. Like it's just – I. And you go back to looking at in a time capsule where you were, and this is why you don't draft for need. Like I specifically remember doing the draft show and Ryan, you were there for that draft show, right? Yeah. I think it was online, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, It was 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 COVID year. Yeah, it was the COVID year. And I, I remember talking about this when it happened and you said, listen, this pick makes sense, but I don't love it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like, yeah, yeah, the pick, the pick made sense in a time Mm -hmm. capsule. But you go back and you look and you say, well, this is why you don't draft for need, right? Yeah. Like this is why you don't draft. Especially for need. in the early in the in the early round, you just take best player available, right? Mm-hmm. Not best player available at a position I need. Right, right, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, they took AJ Epineza because obviously they had uh, Jerry Hughes and Mario Addison mm-hmm. at defensive mm-hmm. ends. You had to, you had to mm-hmm. cycle out that position. We know, mm-hmm. but and and I agree with Joe because how else do you explain Cameron Klein? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Honest, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So right. Buffalo Bills actually opening up the door. If, and, you know, we like to talk about it, and even though he's on the last year of his deal, mm-hmm. you know, we, we talked a lot about, you know, Ed Oliver being on his fifth-year option. People wanted to trade Oliver. You know, what? depending on what the other teams need themselves, mm-hmm. and rather than risk, you know, Epineza going through waivers, you know, a team might just want to pick him up and, hey, we'll, we'll take him. I mean, well, hey, I- Epineza might be the, the candidate – that you were talking about, Paul, for Lawson to go to uh, Carolina. You know, they open well, up and, that. Yeah, and Mark, to that point, right? You let's say let's say you trade AJ Epineza and you're the team acquiring AJ Epineza. He's a one point three million dollars in base salary and free to cut mm-hmm. at that point. Peanuts, peanuts. Yeah, it's free. If it doesn't to cut. work out for you, then you know right. it. You know what I mean? And 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 you know, like you said, Mario, and then I've talked about even with Quisenberry on the other side, like teams always need defensive line and offensive line help. Like that's where teams all have time. needs all the time. And so he's not going to be hard to trade. There's going to be a team that needs him when it comes to cut time uh, or close to cut time. And they're going to be willing to pay that seventh, sixth round draft pick to get on their team. So they don't have to worry about getting them in the waiver wire and they can worry about waiver wires with somebody else. So. Yeah. And due to his production so far, he's not going to garner a huge contract in the offseason right. if, you, if you got him. You know what I mean? Right. Meanwhile, Oliver's posting, show me the money on his Instagram. So, all right, we got to just see uh, who does Ryan have Do spin it? Let me see. Spin it? Yeah, I'll spin it for you. There you go. I think you're going to end up with Klein, though. Yay! Yeah, I mean, this this might be the easiest one out of all of them, right? I mean, AJ Klein's going to make the 53-man roster because he's a veteran who knows the system, and he's surrounded by a bunch of young kids who don't know what the hell they're doing at the linebacker position, aside from Matt Milano. So I think you probably keep him – at least until you know whether you've got stability at the other linebacker position aside from Milano. But I don't see any way he, they break camp and he's not on the 53 man roster at this point in time, at least you've got too many guys that can slide through into, into um, practice squad. You've got, you know, we've already decided that Dodson's gone right at the, at the time they do cut down. So that's one more spot that you don't have to fight for. So I think the question comes down to if it, are you keeping AJ Klein or, Balen Specter, like, I mean, is anybody going to make a case for Balen Specter over AJ Klein when you don't have anybody to fill the position that Edmonds lost and you're looking for that? I think Klein pretty easily makes the roster at this point. Yeah, and I, uh, oh, okay. you don't have Go any ahead. vetoes left. You're done. I I didn't veto anybody. You, didn't, you did I? vetoed him. No, no, Ryan vetoed you. you oh, that's right. I yeah. vetoed you. Yeah, you yeah. vetoed me. Yeah, sorry, Joe. Go ahead. Go are you, right. you going to advocate for him to be uh, traded, Paul? No. I'll, 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 you've advocated for everybody to be traded so far. You just think everybody's got value. We all value players differently, but come on. Oh, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Throwback for those who know they know. Joe, Joe, we we got we got to step out because this is gonna be a one on one. Yeah, this is gonna be a bad bad time. <laughs> bad time. <laughs> What's up, Brian? Yeah, hey, so, going, you man? think you think AJ Klein makes this team, huh? Okay. Yeah, I think so so yeah. it, here's here's why I I wildly disagree with you. <laughs> Right. Because AJ Klein is completely useless to this roster going anywhere but forward. 
right? Like he's a forward moving player at this point. Like think Lorenzo Alexander last three years of his career, right? Just that transitional linebacker. That's just a rush linebacker. And I don't think you have space for that, right? I, I, there's no way to cut it up where I think you have space for that. With that, from Carolina, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I retract previous statements. <laughs> Never mind. There's no climbing that mountain. There's nothing I can say that's that's better than that. Um, I got gotcha you oh, on fun, that. Fun, fun fact. Yeah. Fun fact. Does anyone want to take a guess at how much money AJ Klein has made in his career in the NFL? Oh, wanna... he got a pretty yeah. decent contract from New Orleans. He got a pretty decent contract from Buffalo. Well, for the He's player made that thirty-one he million dollars in his career. Yeah, yeah. That ain't too shabby for a guy who's never really been. Good, let alone great. Who, who's and the not leader a, of that? And not Chase a Daniel? dollar for, for a haircut. No, no. Isn't 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 Chase Daniel like the leader for versus playing time versus how much he earned in his No, career? Matt Flynn, yeah, hands Flynn. down. Matt, Matt Flynn. Flynn. Oh, Matt, because he signed a big deal. But Matt Chase Flynn Daniel was like one a game. One game for Matt Flynn. Remember right. that? Rob Johnson was one no game. better. Rob Johnson was no better. No. But what a game from Matt Flynn. <laughs> what, 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 what a game. <laughs> that one somebody's fantasy league. <laughs> they throw for like, what, like 480 yards and four touchdowns in that game or something, something like, like that. that? Yeah, it was something yeah. absurd. It was he, something fleeced, absurd. Um, he fleeced uh, Seattle with that. So sure we've resigned that Klein makes the roster because he played in Carolina. Yeah, that's Klein. a good enough argument no, I, for me. I, I honestly... Good argument for me. <laughs> Klein, Klein is very polarizing for me because if he gets cut... Ryan... The things that you said, and Paul, the thing I knew where you were headed with your with your argument as far as Klein goes. The things that you said, okay, he's the veteran guy that comes in. He's the guy that you're gonna. Tr- all the other guys that you got a lot of young talent in that room. So what are they gonna try to do? How are they gonna try to learn from McDermott? Well, I here's what they here's hey, kids. Come on, here's what they do. You know, what I mean, when they're not in the film room, it's the time that they're spending with Klein that they're gonna start learning about this defense and the things that McDermott wants and all this other stuff because it's, now it's McDermott. It's not Frazier anymore. So it's McDermott. So Klein is a great guy to have in there. However, I will say this. He's going to be the tipping point for me. If he gets cut, that to me says that McDermott has changed his philosophy so that all the stuff that Klein knows doesn't even matter anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's going to be the tipping point for me. If Klein gets cut before the, the 53-man roster comes out, McDermott has r- drastically shifted this defensive philosophy to something else. And I'm mm-hmm. so excited to see what it is after that happens. So if if they cut, if they cut Klein, I think it's a sign that they have confidence in one of, or a combination of Bernard and Wallace. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have confidence, I mean, again, you use the word, you know, young talent, Mario. I think they're young. I think there's yet to be seen if there's talent there. Right. I mean, there's questions around both of those guys, Bernard and Wallace. And there's a lot of time that's spent not with the coaching staff. You bring up, you know, another good point about that. And that's where Klein steps in. Yeah. You know, we don't know if Milano, I mean, Milano knows what Milano does and he's really very damn good at it, but can Milano teach guys how to do what Edmonds did, if that's what they need to do in this defense. And I I think that's a really big question that probably gives Klein a lot of value right now is that he, he knows what that role was in this defense and he couldn't execute it the way he needed to because he's just physically he's not able to execute it but Mm -hmm. mentally he knows where he's supposed to be and where that position is supposed to line up Mm -hmm. and what its role is and that's where i think his value comes in if he gets cut i think that means either a shift in philosophy which you're absolutely right or there's utmost confidence or combination of the two in bernard and wallace that they pick things up quicker than than maybe some of us would imagine but you want to be careful to avoid the situation that happened last year that made us get Klein back in the first place, right? Because if Klein gets cut and he's signed by another team and all of a sudden we have two linebackers that go down, who are we picking up that knows the system? Like nobody, yeah. right? There's no one left. And all of a sudden we, we're bringing in more talent that might not grasp what McDermott's trying to do. And mm-hmm. and McDermott puts a – I mean, you know, they traded for somebody who knew the position, the safety yeah. position – right at the trade deadline because McDermott values guys who know their role and know where they're supposed to be. And he gives those guys premium spots. I mean, it's why we, you know, it's why we've dealt with AJ Epinesa for so long, right? He's under his rookie contract. They could have cut him last year and I don't think anybody Mm -hmm. would have said boo, but 
you know, he's a McDermott guy and that gets rewarded in this system. And I think that's something that, that, that has Klein has going for it twice. Now he's been mm-hmm. McDermott's guy in, in mm-hmm. two different, two different stops on his road uh, to being the bills head coach. So, you know, again, I, I, he's not a trade candidate. He definitely, I think mm-hmm. he has a ton of value, intangible value when it comes to the 53 man roster, unless you're going to cut him and bring him back as a coach. I don't know what, <laughs> what you would do to cut him unless there's like you said, Mario, there's just a complete, you know, overhaul ideology yeah. shift that that I don't anticipate yeah. coming because McDermott hasn't shown in his career that yeah. he's been able to shift his I- ideology. Yeah, and then Paul will be very proud. He'll have a proud papa moment in a second because we don't know if Edmonds was doing the things that McDermott wanted either. Because if they want players here, they're here. Barring the the, the money it costs and all this other stuff, you want to talk about the salary cap being a myth. You want to talk about it being real. You want to talk about all this other stuff. If they wanted Edmonds here, he would have been here. If he was the guy that was playing that position to, as it's supposed to be played, he would be here at an irreplaceable level, right? Yes. An irreplaceable level, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. yeah. So maybe yeah, that's the, entirely possible. A philosophical set, shift there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Edmonds' skill set—it's tough to find, right? I mean, you it can't is, find yeah. a guy who's that big, that fast, that plays the middle linebacker position. And it just could be that McDermott was using him out of necessity because he can't do the stuff I want him to do, so I'll just have him do the stuff he can do really well. Um, yeah. Right. That that could very well be it, and you know maybe I'm maybe I'm completely misreading what Klein's value to this team is at this point. We spent well, a very inordinate amount of time talking about AJ Klein just now. I think what's going to happen, and this is I can see it in the stars. He's going to get traded. AJ Klein, no, <laughs> AJ <laughs> Klein will get cut at the 53 man roster cut down, and then I will blow up Ryan's inbox with so many <laughs> "I told you so"s. And then he'll be signed back the very next day because of a corresponding roster move. And then I will have to eat the biggest shit sandwich that has ever been cooked up by Ryan Lacell. And I mean, when when you get on the wrong side of Ryan, he will remind you of that one thing for the next 12 to 15 years. Just whenever he's got we all, the we all value players differently. That's exactly right. <laughs> We just, all value players differently. Just to solidify Paul's Mario's point. having a PTSD flashback. I am. <laughs> I, just, well, I just want to tell everyone, hashtag nation, to solidify Paul's point. Ryan beat me in the semifinals of the 2015 Fantasy League, and he still posts pictures of and videos of Randy Orton going like this. <laughs> <laughs> celebrating fantasy football wins. You know what I mean? So just let you know. So I think this was a very positive exercise, guys. I'd like to thank um, I'd like to thank Ryan and Joe for joining us on this dumpster fire. If you guys decide to sit through the whole episode, make sure you hit that subscribe and that like button on your way out. Obviously, all of our stuff can be found on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Joe is killing it over there on TikTok, so make sure you give that a follow as well. Uh, Paul has been adding some weird people on Instagram. I don't know what's going on there, but the point is this. All of our episodes will be on iTunes and Spotify. You know what? But while while you're while you're in the middle of that, I do want to point out that Ryan Lacell has kicked you out of more leagues than he has league championships. That's true. So that's, I think that, that is true. I think that's a fair point. I think that that's is a true. Fair point. I am uh, not very easy to get along that's a, with. That's a story people. for the Patreon, I think. That's a story yeah. for the Patreon. <laughs> we'll tell the Patreon that that's one. That's a whole, right? the whole show about that. I don't know if I, you know what, though? You know, they don't, there's a reason they don't take alcoholics to bars, Ryan. We shouldn't do that. The, bat, the, bat, the Ballad of Mario Granada. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a 30 for 30. <laughs> what if I told you? What if I told you? <laughs> 